Hey, so just to confirm, Ilya was translating his own talk there. Um, so he wasn't available to join us in the questions afterwards in time. He is in the post-talk chat room. So if you have those questions and want to know the answers, you can drop in there. Um, but now we have um, Janelle for, for, for Lea, if I pronounce that right. She's going to um, be talking about improving the navigation experience for grab driver partners using OSM. Um, so they're the taxi drivers in Asia. Um, and hopefully she'll be around for questions afterwards. So um, over to her talk. Good day to everyone joining us here at State of the Map 2021. I'm Aparna, I'm product lead for the Geo Experiences team at Grab, leading the efforts on maps and navigation. I also have Genial Fofia presenting along with me today, who's a lead program manager at Grab. Our talk today is about our journey to improving the navigation experience for our driver partners using OSM. I would like to briefly introduce you to Grab and our, mission, and our team uh, before we go deeper into the talk. Grab is Southeast Asia's leading super app with a mission to drive South, Southeast Asia forward by creating economic empowerment for everyone. We operate in multiple business categories. Transport, deliveries, and payments are the major ones. Uh, to tell you a bit more about the work our team does, we work majorly on the maps uh, that power the Grab super app. Um, here you can see that maps are an integral part of the Grab Super app and they power multiple use cases. So from the places that you select for your rides and deliveries to the distance and time calculation that powers allocation of drivers and pricing, um, the routes and navigation that the passengers and drivers use uh, to reach their destinations faster, and last but not the least, enabling the discovery of nearby merchants, discount, and also essentials during COVID with the help of maps. We'll talk a little bit more about how uh, the Southeast Asia landscape is quite unique while building maps. As you can see in the images here, Southeast Asia has a very diverse landscape, where on one hand, you have countries like Singapore, which are very well planned and predictable. And on the other hand, you have fast emerging nations with constantly changing landscapes and on-ground conditions. Serving such markets requires a much more localized approach to meet the needs of your users. Our focus on the Maps product is to be very hyperlocal, similar to the model followed by a lot of other products launched at Grab. As our users depend on our super app for various needs, the maps we create should also work really well for the ride hailing, delivery, and multimodal use cases. In order to build for Southeast Asia and for our users, our focus has been around ensuring coverage, accuracy, and freshness of the maps. We'll talk a little bit more about how we do so for this kind of challenging environment. So data is at the core of uh, uh, on how we make our map better and smarter. So uh, in case of Grab, we do this with the help of all the data that's available on the platform be it the probe data that comes from the trips done by the driver partners or the unstructured feedback that we receive from our users. Another input is the satellite and street imagery, which can be used to extract data for mapping. One such journey we've had over the past few years is that of building an in-app navigation product, Grab Navigation for our driver partners, and today's talk is focused around that journey. You may ask, what was the need to launch in-app navigation for driver partners? So before GrabNav, uh, driver partners used third-party map applications and used to switch back and forth from the driver app each time they had a new booking or any update in the booking information. Also, the third-party map and the driver app didn't really have any integration, which resulted in some issues. Some of them are uh, that the rides were unsafe as the drivers were distracted while driving and, and they needed to tap multiple buttons each time they received a new booking or any kind of updates. Sometimes they missed turns or ended up breaking suddenly when they received new jobs. Driver partners also had complex booking flows to complete, especially in situations where they have pooling or batching of jobs, cancellations, or changing destination by the user. It becomes quite complex for the driver partner to keep track of what the next step is that they need to complete. 
So having uh, less integration between the, uh, the driver app and the map becomes a problem here. Also, inconsistent routes seen by the passenger as well as the driver because they might be looking at different maps and there might be situations of inconsistency in the fare also because the driver part may use the route that is different from Grab has predicted. So these situations often result in disputes which creates a negative experience. Uh, we've also experienced situations in the past where driver partners complain about inefficient allocations where they get a booking after they cross the area or they, they get a booking that asks them to take a long detour. Now, this could happen because the routes they are driving on using the third-party map, when compared to what Grab might have been uh, assuming that they were on, is quite different, and this would result in inefficient booking allocation. So all of these problems can be tackled much better if the driver partners have an in-app navigation experience, which helps them seamlessly navigate while fulfilling their bookings on Grab, as, and it is also well integrated with the Grab ecosystem. So that's why we, we went ahead with the journey of building an in-app navigation experience for our driver partners called Grab Navigation. Now, you might wonder what it takes to build, Grab, build navigation from scratch. It starts with collecting and editing a lot of information referred here as map data. This is a collection of attributes which represent the real world. In order to create this data, we need to collect vast amounts of imagery and probe data. For ride hailing and delivery companies, usually this probe data comes from the GPS traces of the driver partners as they move along the roads. Imagery collection happens through the open source imagery collection mechanisms. As you can see, uh, most of the imagery in Carta View in Singapore was added by Grab, was done in 2018 and 2019 for the purpose of creating a navigation grade map data. Post this, a significant amount of data is entered either manually or uh, in an automated fashion at huge scale. There is a chance of errors either due to human oversight or lack of knowledge in standard practices and policies. And if these errors do flow through to the end users directly, this might result in a deteriorated navigation experience. So we then introduced a validation step in between to prevent any major errors from surfacing to the end users. In parallel to the data creation step, we also started working on building out the code navigation SDK and our routing capabilities, which were compatible with OSM data. This also included building out a traffic aware and a restriction aware routing. The next step is to build a lot more localization that will help us make the navigation experience best suited to the needs of our customers. It includes building out two wheel and four wheel routes or customization per country based on the local uh, policies and restrictions. In addition, as we were serving the users who are in the ride hailing and deliveries jobs, we wanted to add further customizations that help them do their jobs more efficiently, like ERP along the route, ERP or toll information along the route, and supporting back-to-back -back bookings. The next step that we had to do was to integrate this SDK into the user's mobile application, which in this case is the driver's app, driver app. Uh, also, we, we needed to test this product like navigation. And for something like this, which is mostly used on the ground, we needed our QA teams to be present on the ground and do, route, uh, do this testing on the road itself. Uh, the next step also included uh, building out the user onboarding flows and launching it to, the, to, the, to our driver partners. Uh, prior to the launch, we have done extensive tests with the help of our local operations teams to ensure that we were shipping out a product which is of good quality to our, to our driver partners. Also, the work doesn't end with the launch. Post the launch, uh, we need to have a continuous feedback cycle. With, and we did this with the help of our driver partners who give us feedback uh, as well as the help, uh, as well as they help us learn a lot more on how to improve the product experience iteratively. Now I'll um, hand over to Jinal, who will uh, help us understand a lot more in detail about how we prepared the map data uh, on OSM for launching navigation. Thank you, Aparna. Hello, everyone. Um, as Aparna mentioned, I think map data is one of the most critical things that was needed, and uh, it took a lot of uh, effort and a lot of understanding for making that happen. Um, I think we all know that we have like multiple ways of mapping. One is through the you know satellite imagery, which is like the 2D view is what I would say. And then the other is the 3D view uh, or what we say is street level imagery. So I think another critical aspect that was really needed is to not just have the 2D view, but have the 3D view so that we can see the streets and capture all the information that is needed to make uh, the map navigation ready. 
Uh, Grav has co- contributed to over 14,000 imagery in uh, uh, Carter View, I think what uh, Aparna already mentioned. But let's take a step forward and, and you know, uh, look into how we prepare the base data. Something which is very critical uh, is the base data, that is all the roads. Like we need to have all the roads on the map so that we can, you know, let our driver partners navigate through it and, you know, let us reach the destination that we want to. We've contributed to over 9,000 kilometers of roads and it is on daily basis. We are, you know, looking into it, revisiting it and it's since the last three years. Um, as we move ahead, I think this is just the base data, but I think there are multiple other critical attributes that are needed to ensure that our navi- like we are navigating it in the right way such that our driver partners are helpful and we're taking them to the right places. That is very uh, important. So all the attributes that we see on the screen right now, they mostly are not visible to a map when we are viewing it, but they are essential for us to be able to navigate. Consider if you have a long turn restriction or a missing turn restriction, something which might be 600 meters would actually be 1300 meters. And, you know, so it is so important that each of these are there. And we ourselves have encountered a lot of our driver partners who prefer, they visually see the map once in a while, but they do prefer hearing the instructions. So turn lanes become super critical when we are having turn by turn guidance and many other attributes to it. And one way is we all know that if we miss one one way, there is no turning back. And then we have access restrictions, barriers, and all of it, which may play a huge role in ensuring that it, it the whole uh, experience is seamless. And you know, you as a driver also would want to see whether the streets that you are like you're driving on it has a name or not, right? Otherwise, how would I say that take a left on this particular street? So all of these add on to a seamless and a better experience and hence it is super important for us to be able to have all of this on the map and most critically also keep updating because all of this information keeps changing and that is why uh, you know we went ahead with making uh, i mean through our feedback processes we are trying to keep them as fresh as possible but i think the next question that comes into play is is this enough and um, I think we went a step ahead because Grab has an has another important community that it caters to is the differently able people. So we've also gone ahead and mapped around uh, seventy thousand uh, seventy thousand ways in Singapore which are uh, supporting like zero. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, wheelchair accessible places and supporting pedestrians, uh, you know, to help us navigate in that direction. And but I think after all of this. What uh, does is this data enough? Is what something which uh, Aparna will take us through. Thank you, Gina. So, um, in the journey, in the course of our journey, what we realized is it takes a lot more than just good quality map data to launch a navigation product that is loved by driver partners. Um, so, as the product that we launched had quite noticeable difference in the way it's being used compared to a third party map that drivers were uh, using in the past, um, we also needed to learn a lot. Uh, as we went along the way about our driver partners' preferences and their behavior. So what we did was we launched a grab, grab navigation as a beta tester program in 2019. The driver partners who are willing to try something new and collaborate with us to make iterative enhancements and shape the product roadmap signed up as our beta users. We also ensured that our teams were listening to the driver partners' uh, user journeys and discovering unmet needs from their existing uh, apps uh, by shadowing the driver partners uh, on the rides that they perform, uh, and also you know um, do a lot of user interviews to help discover their problems. Additional forum of interactions that we used were uh, basically the WhatsApp, social media, or focus group discussion uh, forums. Some of which needed to move completely online because of COVID, and these helped us interact a lot more closely with our users um, in order to build out the capabilities that best serve their needs. It also helped us get immediate feedback and a channel to discuss how the next iterations should look like or which fixes should be prioritized. These channels also helped us identify which features were quite intuitive and which required more hand-holding and onboarding for our users. So this guided us in making the right product marketing support available as we launched uh, Grab Navigation to all users.
I think it's great. It has all the features that we're familiar with with the other apps. It has the turn by turn. And you're also able to access all the driver functions through the, when you're still using the map. I think that is great. It's a much uh, it's a bigger improvement from uh, the map that we used before. So we gradually scaled up uh, the launch of GrabNav to all the driver partners in Singapore. And here's a glimpse of some of our launch campaigns. Uh, here's also a quick glimpse of how the product looks. And you can see the screens appearing, uh, which talk about how uh, we support our driver partners' needs as they perform their day-to-day uh, -day bookings, uh, be it transport or uh, deliveries and other, other, other such use cases. I'll move on to talk about some of the key learnings uh, we had in this journey. Uh, the first one is that, uh, that being on the ground is crucial. Uh, because navigation is a product that is uh, really, uh, you know, where a driver is like literally driving on the road all the time. You need to be present on the ground to understand what they are going through. Uh, so an interesting example that we encountered during our beta phase is um, there is an area in Singapore around Nicole Highway, which has a lot of overlapping uh, tunnels and expressways. Uh, mapping this kind of complex intersection uh, just with the help of satellite imagery is quite difficult. So when we did use the street imagery and mapped it earlier, we realized that some of the uh, some of the driver partners gave us feedback during the beta uh, launch that we seem to be guiding them to from one tunnel to another one which is on a different level. Um, so because we were able to quickly detect this uh, problem with our beta users. We, we, we went ahead by deploying our local operations team to take swift, swiftly take a road trip along this route to capture new imagery uh, so that we could actually correct this map data very quickly. So what we realized that is uh, because these roads got constructed at different times of years, the street imagery was not really well captured in the past. So we were able to swiftly take action by adding latest imagery and also remapping this entire uh, tunnel to deliver the best experience for our driver partners. Another uh, learning is that, uh, especially around the street imagery collection effort, is that you need to add in a lot of buffer time into your planning process for dealing with complex situations that might arise during imagery collection activities. Um, sometimes you have rainy days which add to unforeseen delays in imagery collection, and the unpredictable tropical rains in Singapore add to the uncertainty. You also need to take a lot of approvals from authorities uh, like the airport, malls, buildings, authorities, uh, and also for residential condos if you need to cover imagery on the last mile. Uh, all of this takes additional time, so please plan that into your uh, uh, you know, collection process. Uh, sometimes we also encounter situations where tra traffic obstructs uh, the road signs that we want to collect. Uh, so there are situations where you need to do multiple drives along the same road in order to capture the street signs effectively. Uh, so yeah, as I said, all of this needs to be incorporated into your planning process. Next major learning is that uh, as real world keeps changing, a map can never be perfect. So the focus should instead be on making the map uh, as agile as possible to incorporate the changes uh, of the real world back into the map quickly. This can be achieved by leveraging the above mentioned pillars like your users, local authorities, or the OSM community. Um, so we also in addition were able to do proactive map maintenance with the help of the data that is built or the signals that were built into a product that helped us fix a lot of last mile issues, uh, turn restrictions, et cetera. Our driver partners constantly give us feedback um, and we've also made, them, made it very easy for them to sort of share this feedback with us, uh, which our teams actively look into and fix. Working with the local authorities, especially in Singapore, uh, authorities like LTA and SLA share in, with us the information about upcoming road changes and road closures, which we, in, we, which we quickly map into our uh, navigation experience. We also work very closely with the OSM community mappers in Singapore and rest of Southeast Asia to collab collaborate with them. Um, and Jinal will talk a lot more about it in the later on sections. So we also uh, do regular map updates uh, in order to reflect the world, uh, the changes as frequently as possible. So um, some, some data like road closures needs to be updated a lot more frequently than the other attributes. Um, even the smallest of errors make a noticeable impact to our end, end user for use cases like navigation. So you can see that in case of navigation, let's say if we encounter a geometry error, this might result in the guidance being set too early or too late and to result in issues or huge detours for our driver. 
sometimes incorrect POIs uh, will snap to the wrong road and will result in a lot of uh, detours in the last mile. Uh, if you have buildings overlapping on routes, which it makes the routes unclear to see, and especially if the if our driver partner is putting a phone at arm's length, uh, it needs to be very uh, clear or contrasting visually, and this becomes a problem. So these are some of the use cases for which we definitely cleaned up the map data in OSM uh, in order to help our user users to have a good navigation experience. We also hope to continuously monitor and improve on such experiences going forward as well. And last but not the least, each country has its own unique policies, and your system should be able to localize accordingly. So this is an example of how different bus lanes operate in Singapore and compared to Jakarta. Uh, now I'll hand over to Jinal to walk us through a lot more about our community initiatives. Thank you, Aparna. As I think Aparna mentioned that uh, you know feedback is super critical, and I think OSM and communities uh, communities are a sense of OSM. So we try to work with a lot of different communities within Singapore through multiple of our initiatives and you know as I say we can't be everywhere but we do have communities that help us be everywhere and you know uh, we had multiple initiatives and programs that uh, help us get the community together uh, not in just in Singapore but in the whole of Southeast Asia. Uh, we work really closely with our driver partners because it is really important for us to know whether you know what we're doing is actually making sense to them or are there anything they further needed and we get live feedback from them either you know uh, like one of the screen that you saw was basically whatsapp but uh, you know different uh, feedback channels that we cater to and we work with them together we have coffee sessions and everything but we don't let our teams go away from this as well we have immersion sessions like mapping and everything so that they understand the realm of mapping and what are the different things they can do they can do. You can see those happy faces right after a marathon. And then we work with a lot of university students uh, for GeoStars, which is an initiative where we're working with them on, you know, learning about maps and introducing them to OpenStreetMap. We ourselves host a lot of marathons. Yes, this was before the COVID world. These have become more virtual now. But I'm, I'm excited to share that, yes, it is exciting to even virtually connect and learn more about maps and, you know, multiple other initiatives, the humanitarian causes that each of us support. And some glimpses of how the post-COVID world looks like. Finally, we would like to say a huge thank you thank from you. our Grab Navigation team and our driver partners to the OSM community for enabling us to build and improve the navigation experience in Southeast Asia. Thank you. Uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you so much. Hi, so uh, thank you. Aparna and Janelle for that talk. Um, there's been a few questions, but also um, a comment that it was exciting to see accessibility as a priority. Um, so that definitely agree with that. Um, so looking at the questions tabs, and there's been some votes in as well. Um, I think you possibly answered this question towards the end, but um, if we were to get in a grab taxi now, um, if we are in Singapore, um, and said to the driver, open street map, would they know that name or do they just know about the awesome maps? I don't think we can quite hear you. Uh -oh. Right, maybe. <laughs> sorry, I didn't hear you. I, 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 but... Okay, uh, can you can you hear me, Gregory? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I think Aparna, we're still not able to hear you, but probably I can take. Uh, I I don't know if I can cover everything what she was trying to say, but um, uh, I think yes. Uh, uh, as 
through the slides, I think all of you have heard that we work very closely with our driver partners. So they know that uh, we are working on the maps. They know that this is the feedback that they're getting. So yes, they know that these maps are powered by OpenStreetMap and uh, that's how they're getting such an amazing and awesome experience. Um, one additional item to add is, um, so we also attribute OpenStreetMap on our uh, experience itself. So whenever they open the app, when they interact with that attribution, so they can actually see um, one is OpenStreetMap and also all the other places from which we get the data. So they can actually see the list of all the uh, contributors. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think most of probably uh, might go back to Ilya's talk about not everyone's excited about maps. As, so, you know, I would definitely notice if it was OpenStreetMap, I think. Um, great. So what's the next? Um, hang on. If I use this right, I can archive that one because I've asked it. Um, now, this, I think, is possibly a technical question. Um, Grab has been mapping Singapore in fine detail, creating more than um, 10,000, 100,000, no U-term restriction, right? It looks like Janelle understands this more than me. I think the question is about that that's documented um, it, or it's not documented. Is Grab finding it difficult to engage with the community to improve tagging in cases like this? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, whosoever asked. And I think we, when we started mapping in Singapore, we encountered a very unique situation, uh, which was that Singapore basically tells us where we can take a U-turn, but does not tell where we like does not have any board or something which explicitly says you can't. Which means by default, it is you can't take a U-turn unless there is a board that says U-turn. And uh, it's funny, but we do not have any tags as such on OSM. I mean, at least of what we know that are probably prominently used that allow us to say that you can take a U-turn, otherwise it is no U-turn. So that's the reason why it is so finely detailed and you can see so many, uh, you know, no U-turn tags in Singapore. But this was majorly the reason. And I think when it comes to the community as well, we are working towards and trying to engage with the community and understand the nuances. But I feel this was also two years back where the community was also relatively new. So we were, you know, trying to channel our ways, work together. And I think if we encounter a situation like this, now we might have better results or maybe even have a brand new tag which has a different use case cool um yeah that sounds a bit like this open street map you know i've been involved for many years it it changes how relevant it is and and as you say no maybe no one cared about mapping the u-turns but because it it doesn't appear like that on the map but when you use it in a different way for navigation you need different things don't you exactly um so this question was, do you have partners like Uber who already had a map but switched to OSM with Grab? And I think I'd widen that to other, you're focused in Singapore, but other countries are doing similar things with mapping and using OSM. Um, so if you talk to them at all. Yes. Um, thank you again for the question. So uh, one thing we could say is, um, like, whenever we reach out to any of our, uh, you know, uh, friends in the industry or partners, we do talk to them about our journey of using OSM and building a navigation product based on that. Uh, so we do uh, share our learnings as well as, you know, promote the use of OSM in, in general. Uh, and if anyone's interested in knowing more about how they how they can go about doing this or, you know, uh, find out more about this thing, they could reach out to us Um so we've provided our contact details. So if they are interested, they could always reach out to us and and uh, you know understand a lot more about it. Cool. Um, um, one last question here. Um, during the journey, anything Grab would do differently from a retrospective looking back view? Um, yeah, I think uh, at least from the product side, right? I would say. Um, one thing I would want to do a lot more differently is be a lot more actively driving on the road because, I mean, navigation product needs to be experienced on the road. And uh, in the initial stages, we were able to take a lot of road trips and understand like how the product is looking and what kind of data attributes uh, are affecting the uh, product experience in a different way. But when COVID started, I think we actually got restricted into how many times we could go out on the road, especially because of lockdowns. And uh, if I could do it differently, probably I would want to still go try it out. Maybe, uh, you know, have some other means of transport, which I could use personally and, and drive a lot more. Uh, so this is definitely a learning we'll try and use for the, uh, you know, future, uh, wherever we would want to scale up or launch. Uh, definitely we'd want to be more on the road, actively on the road. 
Right, great. Um, yeah, uh, it definitely seems to be the case that you uh, understand on the ground is important, which is a big mantra of OpenStreetMap, isn't it? Um, so uh, I'm going to just point out Guillaume, this great thing of it being live and interactive in Venulus. Guillaume um, said that the question about the U-turns uh, was, was more about making the documented. Can, can we, I think that's him, answering as OpenStreetMap, make it better because the documented stuff isn't suitable for Singapore. So he's more asking from a different question. Um, but we won't get, we'll end it there. Um, if um, if, you, if you're if you on the Venulus platform, I know you'll have to leave this this uh, call. Um, there's the post-talk chat room, um, which you can both go in if anyone's got any questions or discussions. Um, I don't know if there's anyone from similar organizations that might want to chat as well about how you could partner. Um, but thank you for your talk. Um, and we'll end there. And the next talk in about five, in about four minutes. Thank you Thanks so much. Everyone. Thank you.